Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, and this is our Above VTT series. So we're not looking at Foundry anymore, not for this series. We're looking at Above VTT, which is a Chrome browser extension that directly ties in with Beyond D&D, or D&D Beyond, I should say. Um, and most importantly, it's a free VTT. Costs you absolutely nothing. Only downside is you do need to use Chrome, and I know that's not everybody's favorite. Um, but it is a free version. It's really good. I run games using it at the moment. Um, it, it does everything I need um, for the basics, but it is basic. Um, but let's we carry on. Let's keep looking at it. In the last video, um, we had a very brief whistle stop tour, if you like, and we imported some things. Um, we imported a couple of maps, showed you how to create scenes really quite rapidly, uh, and we brought in some characters. Uh, we brought in uh, Valanth here. And between videos, I also just added uh, Name Rock or Nam Rock um, in as well. Just so we've got two different characters here. We've got an elf who's got dark vision and we've got a human that doesn't. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create the rest of our scenes and just show you how quick that is when we're bringing stuff in. Now, in the previous video, I did mention that um, if you're wanting to import maps and things like that, you need they need to be on the web already. Um, you can't upload from your from your computer. So the way that I get around that is I stick my maps and anything like that that I want and I stick them into my Google Drive um, or my OneDrive or whatever it is I use. Make sure that's shared as in anybody can view those documents if they have a link and then I can use that link in um, above VTT and it can access them and you can use them. So it's not difficult but it is a bit more admin on the back end to upload everything. But because this one, above VTT, links directly to D&D Beyond, anything we've got in D&D Beyond, we can just pull straight through. So let's uh, just zoom out of here. So we've got Dragon's Rest. Uh, top right, I'm going to my scenes. We did Stormwreck Isle, so the, the main map of the island before. And we did Dragon's Rest. Now we want to pull the rest in. Remember, because again, it links direct to Beyond D&D, D and D Beyond. I will get it right. It's too many acronyms and abbreviations. Um, in here, in our notes section, um, we already pulled these in, so we can have a look at any of these. Uh, we've got all of the descriptions in here. So what we need, our scene-wise, we need Dragon's Rest. Got that? Uh, Seagrow Caves, ship, Cursed Shipwreck, and Clifftop Observatory. So we've got three more to bring in. So on our scenes, within our Stormwreck Isle we're going to go to this middle icon here, which is to add a scene to this folder. We can go, because we are taking it directly from a module, we can go to D&D uh, &D Beyond up here to the source books, which allows us to navigate any source book we have access to, uh, including all the adventures, of course. I can scroll down here and find the one that I want. I've missed it, haven't I? There it is, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Click on there and this is going to give me all of the images from that module that I can use. So we already got Dragon's Rest but we need Seagrow Caves. So I'm going to import this one. Now remember that this brings in the player map and the DM version of the map because that works differently here. So I've just clicked on that. Looks like nothing happened. If I look in my scenes folder we've got Seagrow Caves pulled in. And again I've got my player open on the other screen. So I can just verify that, the, and I can tell you, and we'll see it in a minute, um, the player version doesn't have these numbers on, it doesn't have these this, this writing on here. So it's already a blank map ready for them to go. Okay, we've got Seagrow Caves. We need more. Now because we've already been to the source book, recently visited is now down here. So it's even quicker to shortcut and go, I want Cursed Shipwreck. I want to import the map. Just check here, it doesn't automatically change over, but I can do that. There's the compass rose. And again, this is the DM version, the player's got their version of it. Okay, one more to go. See how quick this is. It's so fast to do these basic, bring the maps in. And if you've got your maps, even if you've got them on, um, you know, on Google Drive or, or something like that, it's just as easy to, to bring them in. There we go. So that's that's it. That's how that's how you bring in scenes from an established um, 
uh, from an established uh, uh, module in uh, D&D Beyond. Let's say we wanted to do one from a link though. Okay, so I'm going to create a new scene and I want a custom URL. So what this is going to ask me is to give it a name, a name. so I'll call it anything I want, and it's asking for that map link. Now I am not going to show you my drive, of course, um, but what I do have over in the other page, um, not one that we've already done, I'm going to pick, uh, oh let's pick this one. So I'm just checking on the other screen to make sure I've got my sharing permissions on, because if I haven't it won't work and I'm going to post that link in there. Now it's given me an option to use a separate link for the DM map. I'm not going to do that in this instance, but I could, and I could just copy over another version of that. Um, if I want to, so when we look at overland maps, sometimes we don't want to have token vision, we don't want to have light, etc. on there. We can disable that if we want to, and of course playing with grids that we're going to do a little bit more in a moment. Let's leave it as it is. Save that. Uh, and at the top here, I've got my example. So let's click on that. And oh, look, this is the one that I just linked to. OK, so now the player version is exactly the same as the DM version because I didn't choose separate ones. And I can confirm that's just loaded in the other pages an exact copy of this. So even when you're uploading those resources and you're pulling them through by link, it's really not difficult at all. In fact, it's slightly fewer click clicks to do. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's really, really easy to instantly set these things up and get running. And we can just go to our, uh, our tokens screen here with the little person icon, which is kind of the equivalent of the actors icon in Foundry. Um, and under monsters, we've got all of the monsters that we have access to through um, D and D Beyond, and I can search for anything I want. So if you're familiar with this Cragmore Hideout one, you'll know that this is stuff full of goblins. I can just grab these goblins and drop them on wherever I want them. I'm going to put a goblin boss in there. Um, I happen to know that there's also some wolves actually in this chamber. Um, I can chuck those in as well. So it really is that easy to kind of set up. You can even set these things up on the fly if you're quick. Because uh, sometimes players do things unexpected. Personally, I would always rather have some backup um, encounters and things if they decide to go rogue and go off and do something else. I'm going to have a few wilderness encounters that I can kind of manipulate into being slightly bigger encounters, have them ready to pull out the bag. So the story for the player's point of view is a continuity. They don't get that, oh blimey, hang on, I wasn't expecting that, let's end the session early or let's take a break for 10 minutes while I have a panic. You can just smoothly pull it out of the bag and keep running with it. And of course any of these maps like Cragmore Hideout, you might not be running this adventure, but you can use the map, use it for something else. Okay, right, so back to our scenes. I'm going to delete this scene so I can right click on this cog and I can delete, it will ask me to confirm and it's gone. I know it's still showing it, it's because I haven't selected another active screen, uh, but trust me, it's gone. All right, so back to here. Before we do too much else, we do need to sort the grids out on these. We know this is slightly more fiddly um, than a lot of operations and stuff, but it's no more fiddly than it was in Foundry, so let's, uh, let's not suggest that that's a, uh, a drawback of using above VTT. So to do the grid, I can right click on this cog icon and go to edit, and it's about editing this scene. I can change the title, I can change those links to the maps. Um, I can toggle and say, no, actually the players and DMs use the same map. So if I do that, you can see the DM link went. Turn it on, the DM links come back again. I can enable or disable token vision and light. I want that on. I want snap to grid, because I want my character's tokens to be able to move through a grid here for this type of scene. Uh, I'm not going to draw grid, I'm going to do the super mega wizard and that brings up this bit where we can drag our green bits, um, let's pick on this middle bit here, uh, and then drag this one to try and get this what is now green grid to match up as best we can with the other one. It then overlays the red grid, if we look at the bottom down here where you can see my cursor it doesn't match up, I've not done that very well. Let's adjust that a bit, it needs to come down a little bit. That looks close enough. We're off over here. 
we need to move left a little bit. Might have gone too far. Oh no, maybe I need to move it in a bit. Wow. This must be so frustrating for you guys watching me do this, especially when I do it badly. You know what? That's pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click save. Not going to complain. Job done. Now what I can do, get rid of my monsters for a moment, open my players. I've lost my players. I would, it's because I've got wolf in the search. It's searching for players with the word wolf in the name. So I can drop my tokens out here. Weirdly enough, when you first drop them, it doesn't automatically snap them to a square. But as soon as you move them the first time, it snaps them. And remember, we had by default options in the last one, we said put the ruler on. That's why they've got the rulers. So we leave them two there now. We know that they, they snap in, that's fine. Let's go to our next scene, which was the wreck of the compass rose. Again, right click, edit, use DM map, yes, want snapped grid, yes, use the super mega wizard, which is quite a title. <laughs> Uh, just wait for that to load and here we go again the same old game that we need to do but you know what this isn't really taking that long is it no that's rubbish absolute rubbish that looks pretty much perfect at least it's good enough for me I can do that brilliant drag our characters on yep just <laughs> chuck him in the sea by accident uh, and again as soon as I move them they snap to grid great that's that one done how fast we can build these. See Grow Caves. Do, do, do. That's the only thing. Sometimes it takes a little bit to load because it's internet based, not server based. Foundry, because Foundry is installed on my machine, it does those kind of things, loading scenes and stuff, pretty much instantly. Um, because this is web based, it can be a slight delay, so you do need to be concerned that you've got a reasonable internet connection. Um, I've not encountered any problems. Uh, none at all with um, with internet connection when playing. Um, none of my players have complained of issues either. Okay, Super Mega Wizard again. Let's pick up here. Try and get that lined up. Come and line this one up. Gosh, that was a pretty good first shot. Uh, if we just look down the bottom here, it does start to drift a little bit. Um, oh, do I risk trying to make it better? That's slightly off over here. I mean, it is only slightly off. Is it enough that the players would notice? Possibly not. Is it enough that I noticed? Yes, it is. <gasps> right, that's it. I'm not touching it anymore. <laughs> that's good enough. And it, in fairness, doing the grid on this is quicker than doing it in Foundry. It is. You're seeing the speed that we're doing this. Go, go and watch the Foundry video. And watch me mess around trying to do that one. Um, and, and you'll see the difference in how quickly I'm managing to get this to work. And let's chuck our uh, players down here again. Now, this is a bigger map, so obviously it looks smaller on the screen, but we can just zoom in on the map here. It's slightly frustrating that the scroll mouse um, moves the window because it's a web browser window rather than um, enabling us. Oh, don't see, they're not quite in that square. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to fiddle with it. I'll be here forever. Um, but yeah, you, you have to actually go to the zoom in and the zoom out. Uh, and it suggests that you can use the plus and minus keys if you want to. But it's not quite as nice as being able to scroll, but you can't complain. It's really quick and easy. All right, did we do, did we did it for Dragon's Rest, didn't we? We did it already for these ones, which is great. Okay, that's it. So we've got all of these scenes already basically set up, which is fabulous. So now they're done, the next thing I wanna do is look at these character tokens. Um, and and see what they've got with regard to options on them because this is quite important for the player experience so let's zoom in just so that we're looking at one of these character tokens da, da, da. nice and big okay so if we we can't if we double left click it doesn't do anything here if we right click we get this menu and the immediate top one is to open the character sheet so as the DM, any time, I can just open their character sheet by clicking, right-clicking on their token and do that. I can also right-click, uh, no, I can double left-click on their token in the player list here and it brings that up. So I can do that anytime I want. Just opens up their character sheet. And if I want to, I can make dice rolls here. I can see that passive perception of the armor class there. I can roll their Whatever I want to do, I can do here. I can 
also do, so top right up here where the hit points are, I can also do four damage and it will automatically do that or I can do four heal and it adds it back on. So it's very easy because this is the character sheet from D&D &D Beyond. It's the same one, it links to it. Um, so everything there is you need, all the dice rolls and everything, it just pulls straight over. It's really slick from that point of view. Uh, spells are all in here as well. I can cast any of the spells. And any of these, so if I click on Druidcraft, it pops me up a description that tells me exactly what that is. Maybe, what does history cover? I can click on history, it gives me the blurb from the PHB of what that history skill check is. The same with nature. Uh, light armor, what does, or rather proficiencies, it tells me what they are. Um, and if I want to, I can add a new proficiency. So any of these, intelligence, what actually is that? Uh, if I look at my inventory, what's a dagger? It tells me about a dagger. It tells me about leather armor. Everything is linked. So it's really, really nice that you can do that um, for any of these, especially for newer players who like Fairyfy, what does that do again? There it is, there's all the rules. Healing word, oh, can I do that if I'm unconscious? You know, well, you can read the description straight away, it's just there. And of course, you can cast these spells from here as well, and it tracks your slots. So it's really, really good from that point of view. You can see I'm just spamming the chat log here with those dice rolls and things. So it's really, really nice. So that's the very first thing on that right menu. We can also click this to add them to the combat tracker, which is up the top left here. So just opening this window, this is where you run your combat from. We'll look at that slightly separately and we'll do a, we'll do a mock combat just to show you how that works uh, another time. But we can instantly do that. We can hide their token as if they are being sneaky or if we just don't want other people to be able to see it. So we can do that and unhide them. Um, quick rolls, move them to the top or the bottom. So for example, if you've got tokens on tokens on tokens, you can uh, shuffle them around a bit. It tells me their AC right here and their hit points, but also you'll notice this icon has got their hit points at the bottom and their AC in this little shield thing, which is really nice because it's just you don't need to open anything. It's just right there. Condition markers, just like in Foundry, we can just add these on, blinded. Um, and uh, you notice down there it's asking if we're happy <laughs> to toggle blinded, um, but we can. Why is that not? Uh... Oh, there we go. Um, but we can toggle any of these that we want to, poison, petrified, and there's some custom ones we can do as well, uh, or we can just remove all. Um, that's interesting. So... Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we can do all of that. Now, at the moment, that seems to be asking the players if they uh, to confirm that condition. Uh, that's obviously an option I've got switched on somewhere. I would turn that off. Um, because as a DM, if I say you're blinded, I just want that condition applied. I don't want players to be um, having an option to not apply it. I guess it's a way of pointing out to the players and making sure they realise what's happened. Okay, right-clicking again. So we've also got adjust tokens. So we can change the name of our token. We can change the size of our token. We can change the token image as well. So we can upload a new image if we don't like the one we've got. That token image is being pulled directly from their character sheet. So you might say, well, just upload your character sheet, you know, update your character sheet and it will pull across the right one, whatever. <laughs> we can change this border color. So inside this bright green, you can see there's kind of this, um, uh, this, this, this color, whatever color you want to call that. But we could change that. Let's change it to red. And you can see that's now red around there um, as well. So just click off. You can see that one's red. This one's got that kind of swampy green color. Uh, so, yeah, we can scan our tokens if we want to. We can change the size of our creatures. Uh, token auras. So there is a thing called token auras that you can put on. So let's say that uh, you've got a paladin who's got an aura of protection or something like that. You can actually potentially put a, uh, uh, an animation onto it, but I don't normally bother. And you might say, well, the inner aura is going to be, uh, let's, say it's, uh, yeah, let's say it's 20 foot. And straight away you can see that aura that is on this token and follows this token around. Okay, so if one of your players hasn't bathed for a while and you want to put a stench aura around them, it, it's really that easy. 
token auras we can change the color we can make it slightly less obvious um, you can change that color uh, you notice on there under auras you can hide it from other players so the other players can't see the aura you might want to do that for some reason but whatever this is token specific so you might have monsters where you want an aura on but hide it from players you might want a player to have a particular aura that other players can see or they can't see etc um, but yeah you can do that you can only have one aura on at a time though just bear that in mind all right uh, the, I suppose the only way you could do it is if they've got different, sorry, go back to here, you've got an inner and outer aura. So if they've got one that works at 20 foot and one that works at 30 foot, you, I suppose you could go, well, hang on a minute, if I had a 30 foot one on, we're going to just, we're going to have to come out, that's big. Uh, you can see that inner aura and then you can see a 30 foot, so it's a total of 50 foot, of course. Um, you can see that wider aura as well. So you could do it like that, but it doesn't tell you what those auras are. It only tells you that they've, they've got one. So let's turn auras off for that character. Uh, next, this is this is an important one for us, or at least for the way I run games. Token vision light. Enable token vision. Okay. Do we want to share that vision with all players? What that means is if one character can see a monster, does it show up on the map for all of the players or only the players that can actually see that monster? That's up to you. It is quite useful for if you're in combat and it's like, can you actually see the monster? If they if they can't see it, they can't see it. Like, so they can't fire at it. So you might use it for that. It's up to you. For exploration, you might want everybody else to do it. I'm going to leave that off. But I do want individual ones to have that. Now, what you will notice under animation here, we can select some things. We can select types of dark vision like devil sight, etc., um, we can do that. Now this is an elf character. They already have dark vision set to 60 foot. Um, and I'm going to change this slightly to be a slightly more pinky colour that will help us um, in a minute. So this has already got dark vision on it. It's picked it up from the character sheets created for us, which is good. But we can look at the other one in a moment. Um, we can create a note for this token. Um, and we've got some options. So uh, let's... Um, Let's move you this side, okay, <laughs> just for a second. So when we look at these token options, we've got this circle style, which is the same as the one that's, that we can actually see, um, but we can change it to be square um, or whatever we want to be. So you can change, the, it's not an awful lot of configuration. It's not like using tokenizer in Foundry, uh, but remember this is not an add-on, this is just built in. So you can do that. Uh, do we want a visual health or, you know, that gives a, the hit point meter um, or not? Um, we can lock the token, which means we can restrict player access and things. Do we want to hide that token? Yes, no. Do we reveal it in fog? So some things might you might want to have visible even though it's in the fog of war. You can do that if you want to. Move token below darkness light. I've never I don't know why I would use that. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Uh, remove their hit points, armor class, hide the player, hit points, armor class only show hit points values on hover etc disable border just gets rid of that border completely etc show play it show name to players and always excuse me uh, always display names you can have that on um, and as you can see that means this token's always got her character name i don't like that myself i think that gets in the way but i definitely um i definitely come in here and have a look at these and i definitely want to have things like the the vision on token vision so let's look at this one, uh, Name Rock or Nam Rock, whatever you want to call him. Everything's exactly the same, of course. What I just want to do is come down to his vision and see that because he's human, we've got it, uh, light enabled, but he doesn't have any dark vision on. So we can customize all of those tokens as and when we need to, which is useful for the next step of setting up each of our maps because we need to do at the moment they can see everything so if i bring over if i bring over the character uh, just hide that away um, and we zoom in a bit when this is the player character for this sorry this is the player experience for this token at the moment they can see everything we haven't got any walls in we haven't got any lighting or anything like that we've got no fog of war so we want to fix a couple of those bits i'll just shove that out the way Okay, let's start by, uh, let's look at Seagrove Caves to start this on because I think this is going to be slightly more obvious. We're going to be able to see slightly better the effect that we're having. Right, so Fog of War, 
I want to use the Frog of War and I want to hide everything. So we've got player tokens down here. Uh, and if we look at our player token, uh, our player screen, so you can see nothing. Just make sure we we can see nothing here. We can see our own token, but we can't see anything else. All right, because she's hidden in the fog of war, um, and there's no lighting of any description. Uh, so what I want to do is I just want to check to make sure that the lighting is going to work. They have updated this um, previously. If I go to lighting, I should be able to draw areas of light. Yeah, see that is this is a new function that doesn't seem to work particularly well. Um, in theory, I'm drawing a circle. Of, I can draw a circle of light, but it doesn't actually seem to want to do it. Okay, so that's not something that is currently working. I think they may have messed that up. That's a very new introduction. They are updating it all the time. Don't let that put you off. Um, but it does mean our character currently can't actually see anything at all. So we need to do a little bit of problem solving here. Why can't you see anything? So we've got vision. We've got dark vision of 60 foot, so we should be able to see. Why can we not? And it's going to be to do with the map and the DM settings more than anything else. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee that. So I don't want that on. Uh, like I say, I've used this many, many times, um, and it's a great tool, and I do use above VTT for actually running games. Since the last update, uh, I've got a couple of, little, couple of little issues. Oh, I know what it is. Stupid boy. Of course I know what it is. Um, I've got Fog of War on everything. Okay, so what this what this means is it doesn't automatically. It's because I've been looking at Foundry for the past week and just playing with that. That's what's confusing me. Okay, so if you remember, if you if you happen to watch the video where we were talking about uh, one of the tips videos, we were talking about the solution for using miniatures instead of tokens, um, and I said about all oh, above VTT might be the answer. Um, I forgot my own advice in that. So the way Fog of War works in Foundry is everything's under fog of war until a character moves into that area and can see that area and the token reveals the area which is why it wasn't suitable solution for that particular challenge in above vtt the dm controls fog of war so by going to fog of war and going to reveal i can as the dm choose the bits that are no longer in fog of war so if i do just this and then bring over this character. Hide that. I'll zoom in because that's. Uh, you can see that the character now has access to seeing that area that we've taken the fog of war off of. Okay. So as I come into this chamber, what I might want to do is I might want to use circles or something like that. I can actually reveal this chamber like this. Say so, okay, that's what you can see, and obviously, sometimes it's nicer to use circles because it gives a uh, a less hard edge on the map. So I've revealed all of this. Okay, so the characters, both of those characters, can now see all of that area because I've removed the fog of war. That's not the same of them being able to see tokens and the things within that area because that is still going to be reliant on sight. So. If I go to my thing here, um, what do we need? We need violet fungus, don't we? Duh, it's not going to give it to me. Um, there we go. There's my violet fungus. So, zoom in a bit. I can drop my violet fungus in here. Oops, I need to be on select so that I can select the token and move it. So if I put those two in there, uh, in theory, my characters should be able to see those now. Let's just zoom out slightly. Okay, because that's in line of sight. There's nothing to stop them seeing it. So if I right click on this one and do hide token, when we look from what the characters can see, they can only see the one that's not hidden. Okay, to just show you that that hide token really it works as exactly as you would expect it to, but we've got no walls in here um, to stop vision from seeing everything. Okay, so fog of war. If we remove fog of war, that means the characters can absolutely see that area of the map, regardless. But they can only see tokens on that if they've got line of sight. 
um, and walls obviously will block that. So if we go to walls here, these are very simple in um, above VTT. Okay, they're nowhere near as complex as foundry. But if I go to draw wall, and I draw a wall across there, just like that, in theory, these characters down here should not be able to see the violet fungi, even though they're both non-hidden because of that wall. And if we come across here, that is indeed true. So I haven't moved them. The violet fungi are still there, but those characters can no longer see it. Okay, so walls are going to do exactly what we want, but I don't want a wall there, do I? Um, I can delete all walls in one quick thing. But I do want to be putting some walls around here to make this a bit more realistic. Now with a big a map like this, obviously, same with Foundry, it's going to take a while. But because I can now just right click every time I want to put down a wall junction, it's not going to take that long. I don't want to do that. I'll delete that in a moment. Okay, so when I'm panning the map, I'm using the right button, holding it down to pan the map, but I can't do that while I'm putting walls down. So I accidentally left clicked there, which is why it went, oh, you want to put another wall down. Okay, all the way around here. Hey, look at that. If I hold the mouse button again, I can do that. There we go. You learn something new every day, don't you? Well, that's bloody handy, I tell you. So I'm holding down left mouse button to continue doing walls. I right click to end a wall point. If I hold right button as well, I can pan and then just carry on. Lovely. Well, that's a bit of a time saver because doing lots of walls, you can see it's, this is taking longer than importing the whole map. I uh, might want to just put one down here as well. Okay, so now we've done that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of those couple of weird bits that I did. So under controls, I can do raise line. I want to raise the line in that box and that one there. Get rid of those. All right, now let's chuck some other violet fungi around in various places. Just, just somewhat randomly. Okay. Uh, and now let's see what our characters can see as they adventure. So without moving the fog of war, let's just make this a little bit bigger, zoom this in a little bit. Okay, so without removing the fog of war, our character can move around, move around, there we go. Um, but we can't see down there because the fog of war hasn't been revealed by the DM. So for this visual thing, I'm going to go to Fog of War and I'm going to Reveal All. And now when we pop back over to the player view, what you can see is that the player can see the whole map. And at the moment can see all the violet fungi as well. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Why not? Why are the walls not working? Is it? Am I in the DM version? Am I looking at the DM map? <laughs> Was it that one? Yeah, so this is the player one. Um, so the player should not be able to see those violet fungi because of the walls. Okay, something's not worked right here. And again, this is something that wasn't an issue a very short while ago. And now suddenly is an issue. Have I done something stupid about those walls? Tell you what I've not done. I've not put balls in the middle here. I wonder if that's part of the problem. So she's seeing straight through this rocky bit. Maybe it's because I'm a Muppet rather than because there's a problem with the VTT. I know. I know. You'll be amazed, huh? Okay, now we've put a wall in there to block that vision. Let's go back to our token. Ah, right, now what can our token see? Right, we can see these two violet fungi we should be able to, but good, we can't see any of the others as we shouldn't be able to. If we move up here, we can now see that one. It comes into visual range. We can just about see that one over there. As we come across the top here, it looks like we're able to see these ones. 
and then that one's disappeared down the bottom as we disappear around this corner oops we should find those other ones are disappearing from visual range as well okay so that's that is working it was me being a muppet and missing out these walls now you saw that that wasn't perfect at all we could see some funny angles there um, and that would just suggest that my walls are not accurate enough to block some of the vision i just threw them in quite roughly um, but if I want to be, you know, getting it to be more accurate, I should be following these lines a bit better than I was. So, for example, like that. So that means if we're standing here, we're not going to be able to see this one. But under my original wall, we could see through this chunk here. OK, so uh, that's what we that's all we need to do to put walls in and get them to work. So fog of war, we can hide everything or reveal everything, depending on what we want to do. So I would usually have everything, uh, everything hidden. And before we started, I want to move that character back out of there. Don't start off from there. If I know that the characters, when they join this map, let's say they're going to start on these steps, I would be going, OK, so what do I want them to be able to see right from the beginning? I'm going to say, actually, they can see this. Um, they've come in by the sea, so I'm happy for them to see all of this. That's not an issue, um, just chucking it through like that. Um, they're definitely going to be able to see that bit. Uh, I might change it to a circle just to... Uh... So I'm doing this all before the session even starts. What are they going to see when they first walk in here? Um, and I would prep this, you know, I would do it now. I'm not expecting the preps to get here for um, you know four or five sessions or whatever, but this is going to be ready to go. So as soon as they do get to this cave, or if they arrive here unexpectedly early, um, this is all going to be nice and ready for them. I don't like those really sharp edges, so I'm just trimming those down. Okay, so when we immediately flip over to this scene and they arrive at these caves, that should be their starting scene. They're not going to see any of those tokens. They're only going to see what's over here. So let's just check that that is true. Again, we whiz back over here. Let's just uh, fit to screen. And again, they can see all of this sea. They can see this room and that violet fungi, but they can't see anything else. Zoom in. So this character might move up here and I will say, oh, hang on, wait, wait there. Don't go any further. Um, and I hopefully am quite prepared, ready to go. Oh, OK, right, you can do that. And then we can see what else that they can see and we can just do the fog of war as they move now of course normally as they move into this room you'd be giving them a description they're probably going to react interact with whatever's here we know what's going to be here it's going to be the myconoids um, as well as some hidden violet fungi okay so that's basically how it works it's really nice and easy um, let's say this uh, go back to select so I can move my token this token comes up here it's going to get into combat with this violent fungi, which is not necessarily a great idea by yourself. Um, we would just start that combat like this. But we're going to do combat in another video just to show you how that works. We need to, in the next video, we're just going to slap all of the walls in for all of the maps. And then we're going to slap all of the monster tokens in. And we can probably do that all in one video because the walls are really easy to do. Although they're simplistic, they're quick. Uh, and the monsters, we don't need to have access to a special SRD because they're already, all the tokens and stuff are already part of it straight from D&D uh, &D Beyond. Whew, bit of a whistle-stop tour. I hope this has been alright and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.